Hydrogen is a uh, industrial commodity that is used worldwide to make everything from uh, plastics to fertilizer. But it's also a really intriguing fuel. It's beginning to be used in passenger vehicles, but this is a very challenging problem. We're trying to develop a new infrastructure. You're looking at a whole new technology that eventually will replace a century old technology that is very well developed. Hydrogen storage is probably one of the greatest scientific challenges of our time. Uh, these materials are extremely complex. It's really beyond the capabilities of any one institution. The only way you're gonna attack this complex problem is by bringing in the, the best scientists that you can to work on it. A few years ago, the Department of Energy recognized this problem, and they realized that even though a lot of effort had been invested to try to discover effective materials, uh, we really didn't understand how they worked. And that's the whole point of HIMARC. HIMARC has brought together six national laboratories that have complementary capabilities. Our purpose is to try to tackle and solve these fundamental scientific problems using state-of-the-art synthetic methods, uh, supercomputing, and uh, characterization tools that allow us to look at all of these different length scales and understand the processes that are controlling how these materials behave. Historically, really, um, there are two kinds of materials that store hydrogen very well. There are sorbents and there are metal hydrides. Sorbent is a solid substance that's very porous, uh, and it's particularly good at, at soaking up uh, gas molecules, and that will help densify the gas in the tank. Metal hydrides, as their name suggests, um, they're really just metals that form very nice bonds to hydrogen. And kind of the magic of them, and the reason why they're interesting, is because they store hydrogen very densely. Um, I often talk about these as kind of like a sponge for hydrogen. And so our goal is to make a, a, a solid material that would uh, go inside of this tank and allow us to drop the pressure from 700 bar to say 100 bar max pressure. And if we can do that, then uh, that will allow us to use a cheap, lightweight, uh, conformable tank. So you can use all the small bits of the car to store hydrogen. Um, and it'll cut down on all that energy for compressing the hydrogen to very high pressure. Synthesizing nanoscale materials that have exactly the same properties over and over again is a big problem, very difficult. That's one of the things that Highmark is working on, is to make metal hydrides in environments that are consistent over and over again. A lot of the strategies we're looking at are things like nano confinement. How do we take a hydrogen storage material, put it in a confining matrix, have smaller particles that then have much faster and better performance. So we're doing a lot of guidance on the computational side and trying to understand how do materials behave when we make them small and we confine them in a matrix. We're also looking at trying to understand materials that perhaps initially work well but then stop working later on or have, have very slow performance later on in their cycling. Can we understand something about the period of time when the materials are actually working well and can we engineer then the materials so that that behavior is, is maintained throughout the entire cycling. Highmark utilizes a wide range of cutting-edge characterization tools that are unprecedented, I would say, in the history of hydrogen storage research. For example, we have techniques that consist of um, infrared spectroscopy, a so-called drifts technique, that allows us to look at materials that are not normally uh, penetratable with infrared light. We also have techniques uh, such as solid-state NMR at Pacific Northwest National Lab that allows us to look at individual chemistry inside hydrogen storage materials as they change. And then we come to places like this, we're here at the Advanced Light Source to learn with x-rays about the interior workings of hydrogen storage materials as they're functioning. And so all of this suite of techniques allow us to really dig into the details about how uh, hydrogen storage materials are functioning and then help us understand, you know, what are the bottlenecks in those processes that either slow the introduction of hydrogen or its removal? It's not just storage in the vehicle. Uh, the Department of Energy has a program called H2 at Scale, which is looking at the entire problem from production to storage to utilization. The Hydrogen at Scale initiative is looking for hydrogen carriers to be able to do things beyond fuel cell vehicles. Looking at things to be able to 
uh, for power generation, storing hydrogen so you can do power generation later, or uh, making ammonia, so cleaning ammonia, so upgrading biofuels and um, biomass type of materials. So it's a much larger part of uh, the uh, DOE emission. We are trying to focus our efforts in Highmark on the things that are going to make the most difference. And we feel an imperative to do that. We know this is a big problem and we want to solve it. I'm excited about a future where we don't have to stare at the scoreboard for where energy is coming from and what's going on all the time. Someday, 50 years from now, maybe one of my kids be driving a fuel cell car and they can go, well, yeah, my dad was working on those a long time ago.